This is One on One. Ever ask somebody from New Jersey for directions and you get this answer? Well, I know how to get there, but I don't know how to tell you how to do it. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't believe I'm Italian because typically I don't look at you. I'm actually light-skinned and I have blue eyes. But I can tell you people in this room right now, I'm a full blood Italian, but my parents were born in Italy and I could prove it. <laughs> I'm 45 years old and I still live at home with my mom. <laughs> There he is, Mike Marino, stand-up comedian who is uh, performing all over the country and making a lot of people laugh. Good to see you, Mike. Good to see you. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, it's our honor, our pleasure. Um, <clears throat> when did you know that you were funny? You know, I, I didn't ever really set out to be a comedian. All my life, I wanted to be an actor. You know, I grew up doing uh, plays in school, in high school. Where? And, uh, I went to, uh, I was born in Jersey City. I used to imitate TV commercials. And then when I moved to Scotch Plains, uh, in like uh, grammar school and high school, I was involved in the plays all the time. Then around 16, 17 years old, I started going to New York and I started doing TV commercials. I never really wanted to be funny. I thought I was gonna be the next Robert De Niro. Mm. It wasn't until around maybe 25, I moved to California and they kept saying, you know, you Jersey people, the way you talk, the way you act, it's so funny. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm not funny. I'm like funny like how, like a clown, yeah, like, like you laugh? Like I amuse you. <laughs> like <I> amuse <laughs> It's kind of true, but then I figured, you know what, I'll give it a shot. So I started cracking jokes in clubs, and before you know it, I started getting acting work <clears throat> from doing stand-up. So really? it's kind of one of the same, in a way. Just performing. It's performing. It's what it is. I love performing. There's no greater high than a live performance. What about it? You, you just, um, I think I did a show maybe uh, a couple of months ago, maybe 3,000 people just screaming, having a good time. And, and, and I, I finished the show and everybody was happy and I walked outside and one of the radio announcers uh, from a station in California said to me, what does that feel like? And I go, picture the greatest food you've ever had, the greatest sexual experience you ever had, maybe the greatest drug you've ever done, put it all together, that's what that feels like. It's like that. And you have to have it all the time now. You're addicted to it. I'm addicted to it. <laughs> so that being said, um, one of the first ways I got to know you, I mean, YouTube's pretty powerful, isn't it? Yes, very powerful. So one of the first times I saw you, and people were telling me about you, uh, you and just a couple other people, Sebastian Maniscalco, a Sebastian. couple other people, it's really terrific. We just had our, Vic DiBetetto was on recently. Yes, but you, great comedian. He's great. But you, I said, this guy's incredible. It was the Bin Laden sketch. Right. Tell people about that because it changed your world. Well, I had been coming up with uh, jokes about, you know, whacking people in foreign countries and if I was the president, what I would do. And, right. and some of those sketches I actually was doing on The Tonight Show as sketch comedy right. when Jay was on the show. So I would do them live in the club. And um, when I went on the Byron Allen show, Comics Unleashed, I just decided I'm going to do it today. And the audience was going with it, the live audience. That, and, and they started cheering. So all of a sudden I said, you know what, I'm going to stand up. So I stood up, and everybody was cheering, and I did the joke. Tell everybody what it is. I said, you know, if, if we had uh, uh, an Italian president running a country, we wouldn't, wouldn't send the army, the navy, the marine corps to find Osama bin Laden. Two Italians from Jersey would be back in 24 hours. They'd have walked into his cave, they'd have made him an offer, and said, you know what, we got to talk about something. And they'd have took care of it. Then they went home with a couple extra rugs. <laughs> and it just went worldwide, and it went worldwide very fast. So after it hit like two, three million views on YouTube, sponsors started dropping in. And they would say, okay, you know, um, Adidas, uh, Nike, uh, TGI Fridays. And they started putting their ads on the spot. So then I started getting phone calls from, let's say, a casino, a theater, uh, places I've always wanted to play, a lot of Canada. Really? And when you show up, there's thousands of people. Now, they want to see the one joke that you did. Yes. They want to hear you do that joke. However, you do have to do an hour. So, luckily, I can do an hour show, hour and 15 minutes. Sometimes I'll do an hour and a half by myself and home run. Now the clip is up to 8 million. 8 million? 8 million. And oh, it's, check and it out, keeps Mike, on you can going. see it. Um, sorry for interrupting. You make fun of and enjoy talking about growing up Italian. Oh, yes. Because? Because I am. <laughs> I am. And what is real is always going to be funny. I know you're Italian, and I know you were talking to Bobby Rydell about being Italian in the plastic couches, and, and it's true. And what's true is always going to be funny. I grew up in the basement 
We never ate upstairs. That was for the, the, the relatives or the better people. Company. We ate downstairs. It was for the company. company. <laughs> we got company company. Clean your feet and go downstairs. <laughs> Wake your father and boil the water now. You know, all these classic stuff. You grew up with that. It's true. And it makes it funny. It makes it good for uh, sitcoms let, and television. Let me ask you this. Uh, one of the things I also pick up from watching you uh, on video is the question is, does New Jersey get a bad rap? I don't think it gets a bad rap. Or is it who we are? We are? Is, it is it who we are? who we are. I think it is. Who I are mean, we? My persona, my Jersey persona in Texas goes over tremendous. Um, California, all around the world. You know, I'm getting ready to go to Australia. I'm going to perform in Dubai. I performed in Japan. People have an affection for people, let's say, like us, who are from New Jersey, have a little bit of an edge, an attitude, or maybe we're connected, maybe we're not connected, you know, that type of a thing. And it works. There's you know, nothing you can do about it. Connected or not connected. It's yeah. interesting how you say that. I'm a little that. disconnected, but yes, I think I if you know what... <laughs> so let me ask you, we're doing this in, as we go into the summer of 2016, and it'll be seen after. You've got political views. I really do. Like, you do? Like a lot of people. Um, and you consider yourself someone who has the potential to be president. Right. Because? Because I have 8 million views on YouTube. <laughs> now, if I can get 8 million views on YouTube, I can get 8 million votes. Get, so yeah. if you were president... Yes. Tell us some things that would happen. Well, the first thing I'd do, I'd relocate the White House from Washington to New Jersey. Who's going to find us? <laughs> Especially off the parkway at the turnpike. Right. It. We can close down a bridge in no time. Oh, stop. I you, didn't you, stop. I can't, I just, I can't believe you went there. <laughs> so I thought that's where you were going. No, no, I was not going there. All right, then we um, take it back. No, you can't take it back. You already said it. But what else would you do? Seriously, what, what would be some of the priorities if you were president? Well, like I said, you know, I, I, I think uh, I'd go in there with some different personnel. You know, they go in there with the vice president and the, who's in charge of the state. I go in there with Nikki, Joey, Petey, Salvi, Tom, uh, Bobby, downtown Ronnie. You bring guys like this That's in there to cabinet? help you out. That's my cabinet. No diversity? I bring my mom in, so the food <laughs> is different. Is that what you mean? Loyalty, though. Very How loyal. How important is loyalty? Oh, you got to stay very loyal. Very loyal. Yeah, my mother knows every move I make. She loves your show, by the way. Does she? Yeah, she would go nuts if she was in this room right now and saw Bobby Rydell. <laughs> yeah, by the way, uh, we should let everyone know the reason Mike's saying is Bobby Rydell was just oh. here. And they saw each other in the green room, and you actually opened up for him. I opened for Bobby Rydell and Dina Martin at a big Italian festival Dina last Martin, summer. Dina Martin, who is uh, Dean Martin's, Dean Martin's daughter. What a great singer she is. Yes. She's terrific. Um, i got to ask you something. I'm curious about this. Do you think there's something about, not just Italian-Americans, but Italian-Americans from New Jersey? Yes. Something that, I, I know it sounds very inside right now, that, that quote-unquote we get. We're very matter of fact. Yes, it might be in your face, but at least you get the truth the first time. If somebody doesn't like you, you know for sure they don't like you. And if they do, then they're going to tell you, I love you. And then you know you're loved. You're loved. You go to different places, different parts of the country. You really don't know where you stand. You know. We let you know. And by the way, tell everyone again where they can find you. I'm at MikeMarino.net. I tell people all the time they can follow me on Twitter, but I'm Italian. I don't really like being followed. <laughs> Hey, what's Reconstructing Jersey before I let you go? Reconstructing Jersey is a pilot about my Italian family living in a basement in the construction business. Listen, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. It's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, 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 you're good. Mike, listen, I appreciate it. Thank you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, MagnaCare, New Jersey City University, Investors Bank, NJM, NJ Best, and by ShopRite Supermarkets. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.